Hi, welcome to Overview Part 2 of Chapter 4, where today we're going to talk about acids, bases, and neutralization reactions. So here are the topics that we're going to be covering today. First, we're going to define what an acid and a base is, and what is the difference between a strong and a weak acid and base, and how when mixing these two together, they neutralize each other. And once they do that, how do we write net ionic equations for this? And particularly if we have a strong acid and a strong base, a strong acid and a weak base, a weak acid and a strong base, and a weak acid and a weak base. So first, acids. Acids are substances that are ionized in aqueous solutions. And this was the definition that was proposed by Arrhenius. So when you dissolve a substance in water, it produces or forms an H+. The second acid-base theory was bronsted lowry and they made it a little bit more generic. They just said that acids are proton donors. Proton donors. And since H+, is a proton, you can see the similarities there. Okay, here are some diagrams of some acids. So what is the difference between a strong and weak acid? So let's look at the diagrams that we have here. Let's look at the one on the top. So here we have a strong acid. And if you notice, every molecule that is placed into water ionizes into ions. Okay, And here we have a weak acid. And what happens to every molecule that is placed into water? Some of them only ionize, not all of them. And that's shown over here, too, in the bottom diagram. So here are all of your acids, and their water is added, and they all break apart into ions. So this is 100% ionized. And this diagram over here shows that there are still some compounds that did not ionize, so not 100% ionized. And remember, ionized means when a substance forms ions. So using the models on the left, come up with a definition for a strong and weak acid. So a strong acid ionizes completely and a weak acid does not ionize completely. And now on the bottom here, we have three acids. And it says rank them from weakest to strongest. Okay, so basically you're looking at how many of the compounds ionized. So if you look at the first one, you see that two compounds ionized here. So these, and the one in the middle, they all ionized. And then this one here, one, two, three ionized. So the weakest one will be the one that ionized the least. So. HX is the weakest, then comes HZ, and the strongest acid is HY. So that would be from weakest to strongest. So just a summary, strong acids completely ionize in water, and weak acids only partially ionize in water. Luckily for us, there are only seven acids that will ionize completely. So there are only seven strong acids, and they are listed here. And it is highly recommended that you memorize these. You'll see later on in this presentation why. It comes in handy when we're writing um, net ionic equations. But in this diagram here, they're showing you that the nitric acid separated into H plus and NO3 minus. So it ionized completely. 
bases, okay? Bases are substances that will accept the H plus ion or the proton. Remember, this is called a proton. Okay, or you could think of it as they increase the concentration of hydroxide when dissolved in water. So Arrhenius said increase concentration of hydroxide. Bronsted Lowry said that it is an, a proton acceptor. That's Bronsted Lowry. It's two guys. So if you see in this picture here, the water is donating a proton and the NH3 is accepting it. So the water in this case is the acid and the NH3 is the base. Because just looking at the formula, you don't see OH in here, so it's not readily apparent that NH3 is a base. So let's look at some molecular drawings of a strong base and a weak base. So in this case, your strong base, what is happening to all of your sodium hydroxides as you put them in the water? You will see that they all dissociate. So this is 100% dissociated. And in your weak base, you will notice there are some NH3s that did not dissociate. So partial dissociated. So what are our definitions? Well, our strong base dissociates completely. Now, why am I not using the word ionizes? Because if you're an ionic compound, if you separate into ions, it's called dissociates. If you're a uh, covalent compound and you form ions, that's called ionize. A weak base will only, will not dissociate completely. Okay. So here are the official definitions. So your strong base dissociates to a metal cation and hydroxide ions in water. A weak base will only partially produce hydroxide ions. So luckily there aren't too many bases that are strong. So your strong bases are um, soluble salts of hydroxide ions. So if you have an alkali metal bonded with hydroxide or calcium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, or barium hydroxide. Remember, your alkali metal is your group one metals. So this is the same diagram before. So here we have an acid and base reacting with each other. So in your acid-base reactions, the acid will donate the proton. See, it is donating it to the base. And this is how you would write it. Okay, in this case, the arrows are uh, reversible because this is a weak base. So what happens when we mix an acid and base together? When you mix an acid and base together, these are called neutralization reactions because you're trying to neutralize them. When the base is a metal hydroxide, okay, and it is mixed with an acid, you will produce water and a salt. Salt is a generic name for an ionic compound. Okay. So let's look at the examples shown below here. We have hydrochloric acid, which is a strong acid, and we have sodium hydroxide, which is a strong base. These will react to form water and sodium chloride, which is an ionic compound, which is considered a salt. Okay, since my acid and base are strong, I can separate all of them into ions. 
right? Wasn't that the definition of the strong? Completely ionized or completely dissociated. So here we have H plus and Cl minus, which is the ionization of hydrochloric acid. And Na plus plus OH minus, which is the dissociation of our base. And it's going to produce water. Since water is pure, so if you have a solid, liquid, or gas, you cannot write it as ions. And then lastly, sodium chloride from our, our uh, part 1b video, we know that if it is soluble, we can write it as ions. So this is soluble. So we can separate it into ions. So here we have our complete ionic equation with all of our ions in it. Now, if you remember back to when we learned about net ionic equations, the ions that are the same on both sides can be crossed out, and they are known as spectator ions. Once you cross them out, what you're left with is your net ionic equation. When you have a strong acid and a strong base neutralizing each other, your net ionic equation will be H plus plus OH minus gives you water. Some neutralization reactions will produce gases. And it's good that you start to come familiar with this. In particular, carbonates and bicarbonates, when you react them with an acid, um, if you've ever mixed baking soda with vinegar, you get lots of bubbles. Those bubbles happen to be carbon dioxide. Okay. So when you are mixing these, let's take calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid. You're going to form calcium chloride and carbonic acid. But carbonic acid immediately breaks down into carbon dioxide gas plus water. And this was in the uh, 1B video also. This is one of the ones that you should start uh, memorizing, okay? The same thing happens when you mix a bar bicarbonate, okay? You're going to form carbon dioxide and water. Some reactions here will produce something called hydrogen sulfide. Hydrogen sulfide is a gas, and that is what gives uh, eggs its sulfurous or rotten egg smell. So anytime you produce hydrogen sulfide, it will be a gas in a double replacement reaction. So here are some gas forming reactions and I recommend you read over these and memorize them. It'll just make your life easier when you're writing your reactions so you know when to separate them into gases, okay? So if you look down here, whenever you form NH4OH, or um, ammonium hydroxide, it'll break up into ammonia gas plus water. And you're going to see a lot of this pop up in the questions. In this particular example, you produced H2SO3, but that immediately breaks down into water and SO2 gas. Again, some of these were in the video from last lesson. Here again, you produce carbonic acid that breaks up immediately into carbon dioxide plus water. So I would suggest you read over these, maybe make yourself some quizlets or flashcards so, so that it becomes second nature to you. All right, so let's do some examples of writing the ionic equations for the, these four neutralization reactions, okay? So the first one here, you're going to look at your reactants, and this is, these are the steps that you should do for all your neutralization reactions. And you need to determine if your acid and base are strong or weak. The reason why you have to memorize them is we have to use them, okay? In this particular case, sulfuric acid is a strong acid, and lithium hydroxide, lithium is a group one metal, so that is a strong base. So because they are strong acids and bases, we can separate them into ions because they dissociate or ionize completely. The next thing you want to look at your products. If you have a pure product, something that's a solid, liquid, or gas, 
You cannot write it as ions, you have to leave it whole. Then you look at your salt, and you have to check your solubility rules. If your salt is soluble, you can write it as ions. In this case, lithium sulfate is soluble. Remember, all group one metals form soluble compounds. So let's write our complete ionic equation. So because these two reactants are strong, we could separate them into our ions. So here I separated sulfuric acid into 2H plus, plus SO4, 2 minus, plus 2Li plus, plus 2OH minus. And water I can't separate, so I leave whole. And then because lithium sulfate is soluble, I separate it. Then in order to get my net ionic equation, I cancel out all of the ions that are the same on both sides. Again, these are called spectator ions. And then I am left with H plus plus OH minus yields H2O liquid. Okay, in general, if you have a strong acid and a strong base, your net ionic equation will be H plus plus OH minus yields water. That is not true if one of your acids or bases is weak. So here's an example. So here we have nitrous acid. So when you look that up, you see that that is not a strong acid, it is a weak acid. But potassium hydroxide, potassium is a group one metal, so that is a strong base. So if your acid is weak, you cannot write it as ions, okay, because it does not ionize completely. But since your base is strong, you could dissociate that and write them as ions. So here is how your reactants will look in your ionic equation. You are going to form potassium nitrite plus water. And potassium nitrate, when you look up on your solubility rules, is soluble, so you can um, write it in a an ionic form but your water is pure so you have to leave it so here are your products written as ions so put it all together here is your complete ionic equation looking at it you could cross out your spectator ions so notice there's only one spectator ion here because your acid is weak and it doesn't um, ionize completely so your net ionic equation is not H plus plus OH minus yields water, okay? It's slightly different here. So when you have a weak acid or a weak base, your net ionic equation will not necessarily be the same as for the strongs. So let's do this example together. So here I have hydrochloric acid, which is a strong acid. So since it's a strong acid, I can separate it into ions. But I have ammonia. Ammonia is a weak base, so I have to leave it together. Let's look at my products. Ammonium chloride, remember all compounds with ammonium in it are soluble, so we can separate this into ions. So this here is my complete ionic equation. Now looking on both sides I could cross out my spectator ions and then what I am left with is my net ionic equation. Okay, so it gets a little bit more complicated when you have weak acids or bases. You actually have to work through it. What if they're both weak? So if they are both weak, you can't separate either of them, so you have to leave them. So here we have our um, acetic acid, which in case you didn't know, vinegar is just diluted acetic acid, plus our ammonia. We can't separate them. But they're going to form ammonium acetate. And all compounds with ammonium are soluble, and all compounds with acetate are soluble. So we could break this up into our ions. Okay, so in this case, 
we have no spectator ions. So our complete ionic equation is our net ionic equation. Okay, so when you have weak substances, you have to work through them. Make sure you get the right um, net ionic equation. But just follow the rules that your weak acids and weak bases cannot be written as ions, but your soluble um, salts that you form can. So what are some applications of neutralization? Well, if you've ever had a stomach ache or acid reflux, you have taken an antacid. An antacid is a fancy name for a base. Okay, so your Alka-Seltzer, um, your milk of magnesia, there's quite a few medicines that are basic to kind of neutralize your stomach acids. Because remember, the acid in your stomach is hydrochloric acid. So let's summarize. First of all, there are seven strong acids that you need to memorize. So get on that. Start memorizing it and make your life easier. The strong bases are hydroxides bonded to group one metals and calcium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, and barium hydroxide. Your strong acids and strong bases will neutralize to form an ionic salt in water. That is true for strong acids and bases. Remember your net ionic equation for strong acids and bases will be as follow. Your weak acids and bases cannot be written as ions in an ionic equation. And there are certain reactions that will form gases. And I showed you that table in this uh, lecture video and in part 1b. So you should also memorize these so that you become familiar with it. Okay, well, this was chapter 4.3, and if you have any questions, let me know.